morning, the death toll in New Zealand's worst massacre in modern history has now risen to 50 after one more body was found at the Deans Avenue Mosque. Lisa Davies joins us now live. And Lisa, we've just found out two children are among those killed. Simon, that's right. Just when we thought that this tragedy couldn't get any worse, yes, police have confirmed that two children were killed in this terrorist attack. We believe that one of them was a three-year-old boy. His name, Mukad Ibrahim. He's Somalian. He's from a family of seven. And one of his oldest brothers just arrived back from overseas to support the widest, wider family in this just absolutely shocking time. And behind me here, you can see a mountain of flowers. People have been piling flowers up since Friday night, but in amongst them are teddy bears for those two children who lost their lives. These are the faces of those who were killed. So many faces, young and old, men and women, all wrenched suddenly, violently, from their families, from their friends. I lost three of my best friends, three of them in the bed of hospital, which is hard. Explain. One of those friends, 71-year-old Haji Daud Nabi, sought asylum in New Zealand more than 40 years ago after fleeing Afghanistan with his two sons. That is really hard for everybody, for every human, even though I'm not their relatives, but they just was my friend, but I'm suffering a lot. As people grieve, tales of heroism emerge. Naeem Rashid came to New Zealand from Pakistan in 2010. He tried to take the attacker down, but he was killed. So was his 21-year-old son, Tyler. I mean, I wish I could die like him, really. And uh, dying like he was, he was a brave person. And I've heard from people there, the, uh, there were a few witnesses, and who said that he saved a few lives there uh, by trying to uh, stop that guy. I saw that video and the first thing I wanted to see was the look in his eyes. I did not see an iota of fear in those eyes. And that made me proud. What a brave man he was. He's my hero at least. In Karachi, they're mourning another Pakistani. 27-year-old accountant Saeed Ahmed had worked in New Zealand for a year. Today, the scene at the Memorial Cemetery couldn't have been grimmer. Behind this long white screen, the graves for the 50 victims are being made ready. Some have been released to their loved ones, others must wait longer. We have to be absolutely clear on cause of death and confirm their identity before that can happen, but we are so aware of the cultural and religious needs. Uh, so we were doing that as quickly and sensitively as possible. This is a transit for us in this world. What, what happens from here is the real here after. That's where you are going to be judged. So that's why it has to be done as soon as possible. At the Dean's Avenue site where most people died, the silence is profound. Flowers ferried to the mosque wall by police. It's just a very important thing to show the community that everyone's here to support them. Despite what happened on Friday, we are a loving country who accept everyone and that doesn't define who we are. A crime scene that's becoming a shrine to those who perished here. Let's go back live to Lisa. Lisa, do we know when the bodies are going to be released to the families? Well, Simon, obviously this is incredibly important and it's causing another layer of distress to the families of the 50 people who lost their lives. But police have highlighted in their latest uh, update at 5.30 tonight that uh, they're treating this with absolute urgency. But because it's a legal process, they have to be certain they get things right. But they have five coroners working on this. They're doing CT scans of the bodies. They're doing everything they can to make this process as fast as possible and they do hope to return some of those bodies to their families tonight so that funerals can get underway and there is a promise that by Wednesday all families will have their loved ones returned. What police also wanted the public of Christchurch to know is that yes, tomorrow it's business as usual, schools are open, people will be back at work, the central city will flood with Cantabrians once again but there will be a very high police presence around schools and 
other built-up areas. People shouldn't be alarmed by that. It's just a precaution. Lisa, thank you very much for that. Well, the two officers who made the dramatic arrest of the alleged gunman just 36 minutes, remember, after the shooting was reported, were in Christchurch for firearms training when the attack unfolded. They and hundreds of staff from all emergency services raced towards danger, trying to stop the carnage and save lives. Donna Marie Lever reports. <laughs> First on the scene, the selfless actions of frontline and armed police caught on camera in Linwood, running towards the massacre as others fled. Two senior constables, country cops, hailed as the heroes who stopped a killer in his tracks. Ironically, they were training in firearms that day. So um, they were up to date and knew exactly you know, all the sort of things, but it's the decision making. The shooting brought to an end as the pair held the gunman to the ground and restrained him. Uh, had to use some force and deploy with uh, our tactical options to make that happen. But again, they put themselves in harm's way to stop any further attack. And I do believe they did prevent further attacks. They're pretty um, down to earth sort of guys. Um, but they're very, you know, I think everyone knows they're heroes. Though that's not a name they'll call themselves. But in Lincoln, where the policemen are based, there is nothing but praise. Oh, I'll just take my head off to those guys. In a really horrible, sad situation. Um, I'm really proud that you know the local Lincoln police. It takes a fair bit of guts to do that. It does say something about country cops. So you want a job done, you give it to people that roll up their sleeves and get things done. And pretty proud day. More than 20 ambulances were also on the scene in minutes, medical staff frantically saving who they could, facing a scene unlike any other. A horror, uh, stunned, um, anger, those are the words that I've sort of had uh, uh, related to me at this point. And still they work, standing in the rain, guarding scenes and connecting with a community still so hurt. Immensely proud. <laughs> Uh, really, really proud to see what these guys are doing. Um, uh, they've all got families and, and the likes at home. As tributes and messages continue to stream in, the people of this city took a moment to thank those protecting it. Doing a really good job showing uh, what we all should be now, which is open arms. More than 120 extra police have been deployed to Canterbury to help. So many more have offered. Queuing up. You know, we could fill Hercules with cops that want to be here to help. Help this city still needs as reality sinks in and the healing begins together.